Hi, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Learning Go video. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you another concurrency pattern called Publisher Subscriber. The Publisher Subscriber pattern is typically used in distributed systems, but you can use it also in memory. The way I'm going to show you is going to be using Go channels and Go routines. It basically consists of having a publisher that pushes out events or messages and a bunch of subscribers that are interested in receiving those events. Now, a real life example will be when you are looking for maybe some news, specific information about the sports, specific information about different leagues that you like and different teams. So you don't want to hear anything or everything about the whole league. You are interested in the teams that you like. So in this case, you are subscribing to specific topics or events that you are interested in. It's the same idea. So let me show you the code. As usual, the link to the code that I'm going to be showing you is in the description of this video. So feel free to check that out when you have some time. Let's init this module. You can use whatever module name you want to use. I'm just using this one just for to have something. What I'm going to be doing first, I'm going to be implementing a new pop sub type that is going to be using generics. Next, we need to define three fields. A slice of channels, which indicate the subscribers, a Boolean variable that indicates whether the pop sub is closed or not, and more importantly, a mutex. A mutex is used to prevent multiple go routines to access share data. Then we need to define a method to initialize this type. We can use the convention that initializes what we need to initialize in the type internally and go from there. Next, we need three methods, one for publishing events, one for allowing subscribers to subscribe, and one for closing the whole thing. Let's start with the subscribe method. The subscribe method is going to be doing two things, return a new channel that is going to be used for sending new data to this new subscriber, and also updating the internal slice of channels that we define above. Let me show you. In this case, what is important is to use the mutex because we are updating an internal field in our type. So for doing that, you call the mutex with lock, and then you just defer the unlock. What is this going to be doing is going to be unlocking the lock after the function completes. One check that we need to have is that if it's closed, we just cannot do anything because the channels that we had before are closed, so we just can continue. So in this case, we just honor the variable close and we move on. Now for subscribers, we need to have a append that will create a new subscribers and a return field which we didn't define yet which will be here so we make the channel and we return it so like i said we use the mutex followed by checking if it's closed or not we make the new channel and we update it and finally we return it for publish we're going to be doing something similar we implement the function publish but in this case we're going to be using the r lock and again, we defer it with smu r unlock. And the reason being is that we are not modifying anything internally in our type. We are only reading the values that are available in the subscribers slice. Again, we do a similar check if it's closed or not. And finally, we just use a for to read all the existing subscribers and we send the value. To recap, we call the mutex, we check if it's closed, and finally, we just push the values out to the subscribers. Finally, the third method will be close. Again, in this case, we call the mutex. And similar to the subscribe method, we're going to be using lock instead of our lock, because we are modifying a field internally, which in this case will be the close field. And like we did before, we check the closed value and we just go and loop through all the subscribers and we close each one of them. And we update the value of close. Again, we call the mutex, we check if it's closed or not. We close all the existing subscribers and finally we update the variable and we exit. Now, how does this work? Let me show you the code in main. In main, we need to initialize our pop sub. So we call new pop sub. We want to use a string. And we're going to be using a weight group so it prevents 
exiting the main go routine without the other go routines and channels that we're going to be defining for reading and sending values complete. So in this case, we call it WG. Now, the first thing I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be duplicating this for the sake of just simplicity, but it basically is going to be creating a new subscriber and it's going to be listening to the messages that we're going to be sending. For doing that, I'm going to be using a go routine. I'm going to be updating the wait group so it waits and completes after the publisher subscriber type closes. Let me show you. So in this case, we just create a typical go routine. We add a new value, which in the case is a new group. We use the for to continue reading messages until there are no more messages. We use the select to indicate what are we waiting for. We use OK. In this case, we need to subscribe. If it's nothing, we just print the value that says sub1 exiting, meaning that the value of all here and the value of OK, this is a value that is coming from the publisher, but the value of OK indicates that it's no longer open, so we can exit. We just say WG done. And finally, we return. And the last part will be to print out the value. So we can sub one, so the subscriber one, value, file. Now, if we copy and paste all of this and we create a new subscriber, so just to differentiate these two, so we have S2 here, we have S1, S subscriber. Now we have two subscribers. Both of them will be receiving the same messages. Now, what we need to do next is make sure that the wait group is waiting and start publishing values. So the publisher will be pops up, publish, one, two, three. So with that, we're going to be publishing three messages, the subscribers, the two of them will be receiving those messages. So what is the output of this program? Let's see. Before showing the output, one thing that I miss will be adding the close. And this way we'll be exiting the go routines cleanly. And finally, I just want to print out a message that says completed to indicate everything is OK. OK, let's build the program and run it. Now, if you notice, we have the things that we were looking for. Sub 1 and sub 2 are receiving the value of 1. After that, the value of 2. And after that, the value of 3. And finally, it says completed right here because I was using print instead of println. But I guess you get the idea. One thing that I want to call out is the way this for is implemented. There is a different way to do it and probably a cleaner way to do it. Do you know how? Let me know in the comments. And that's it. This is the concurrency pattern publisher subscriber implemented in Go. Hopefully you find it useful. I will talk to you next time. Until then, take care and keep it up. See ya.